Hi, welcome to the presentation for low-cost spectrometer accessory for a cell phone-based optical sensor. My name is Peng Xianghu. I also go by Jerry. I'm a senior electrical engineering student at Tufts University. This research is a collaborative work among me, Dr. Candidate Yu Chen, and Dr. Samir Sunkusali, who is also the PI for Tufts Nanolab. Without further ado, let's start this presentation. Here is the overview of today's presentation. I'm going to talk to you about motivation, background, working principle, and other aspects of this low-cost sensor. First, the motivation. Since 2007, thousands of smartphones with integrated cameras, access to internet, and user-friendly in interface have come into the market and gained wide popularity in several years. According to Statista, smartphone shipments are going to reach 1.8 billion units this year in 2015. It really has become an indispensable part of our life. At the same time, medical diagnostics is a booming $48 billion market with significant future growth. Also, point-of-care diagnostics has gained more and more attention in the healthcare industry by eliminating the use of expensive instrumentation compared with traditional lab-based diagnostics. Combined with the rising accessibility of point-of-care diagnostics, there is still a projected shortage of 124,000 full-time equivalent physicians through 2025. As a result, it is very promising to combine smartphone with point-of-care testing. So the goal of this project is to make a portable and miniaturized spectrometer that can capture light intensity information at different wavelengths. Current models are very expensive. This picture on the right is a bulky industry spectrometer. In fact, it's over five figures of US dollar. And the portable ones below are also expensive and over $2,000. Our prototype may not have as good specs as some of them, but the price quality ratio is definitely superior. This picture is an illustration of the entire system. We can use a smartphone accessory to analyze the colorimetric information of different analytes. And once the data is in sync and uploaded to the cloud, um, the physicians can remotely give treatment to the point of care diagnostic. There have been some famous work done in the past to integrate the smartphone device with the point of care testing. Dr. Wei, Dr. Chi, Dr. Oscar and from UCLA developed a fluorescence microscope that can be used for specific sensitive imaging of sub-wavelength objects including various bacteria and viruses. This few portable fluorescence microscope is an attachment to a cell phone, as you can see from the picture here, and only weighs about 186 grams. The second example here is a label-free biosensor detection instrument developed by Dr. Cunningham's lab uh, from UIUC. In fact, this biosensor is similar to our smartphone accessory sensor because their biosensor also utilizes a cradle to hold a smartphone and a spectrometer for a sensing principle. But there are also some major differences between their prototype and our sensor. First of all, their biosensor fa is fabricated on a plastic substrate from a UV curable polymer by a rep nano replica molding process, and thus demanding an extremely clean fabricating environment such as clean room. Their cradle of the biosensor was made from anonized machine aluminum, which can be very costly and hard to access. Whereas the sensor of our smartphone accessory is 3D printed by commercially available material, and the cradle and spectrometer framework is fabricated by a wood material, accessible by anyone in the world. This slides talk about the working principle of the spectrometer sensor. Here, according to the first equation, d sine theta m, this D denotes the spacing of the grating. In our case, it's a thousand lines per millimeter. And this spacing must be wider than the wavelength of interest to cause diffraction. And the theta m here is the, way, uh, the, the angle where the diffracted light gains its maxima at normal instant. A lambda is uh, the wavelength of the light. So according to the second equation, theta, theta i is the arbitrary instant angle. That means if we tilt the incoming light, white light to uh, an angle, the diffracted light will be closer 
to the normal angle, which is what we wanted in our case. As a result, once we insert the sensor with the sample before the light goes through the grating, different light absorbance of different samples will affect the final display of the captured spectrum. So this is a device structure view. Um, the spectrometer frame is made from wood and it's 55 millimeters in width and height and 155 millimeter in length. That's the interior dimension. The YLED used here is just a normal 5 millimeter YLED with power dissipation of 0.12 watts. The light comes from the YLED, goes to the sensing chamber first. And once we zoom in, this is the zoom in picture of the sensing chamber. It's a round reservoir uh, of 10 millimeter in diameter and 2 millimeter in depth and a 10 millimeter long cuboid of the same depth uh, is extending from the top of the reservoir. Uh, it's made from very clear, uh, it's 3D printed from very clear RGD 810 material. Uh, so it's very commercially accessible. And the slit uh, here is made from two pieces of plastic blades with spacing of 100 micrometer in between. The grading, as I talked earlier, is a thousand lines per millimeter and it's directly purchased off Amazon. Uh, the iPhone cradle here is customized for iPhone 5S and the camera is from iPhone 5S and it's an iSight camera with eight megapixels uh, CMOS sensor and it has the aperture of 2.2 which gives us a wide field view. So these are the actual pictures of the device. As you can see I painted the interior to be black to avoid color interference and I already labeled each component of the spectrometer uh, device. You can compare this picture with the drawing of the device uh, to see what corresponds to what and this is the grading after finishing designing the device, we validated it with pH sensing because pH value is one of the most important parameters measured in the industry. We used methyl red as pH indicator dye and the detailed procedure for making the solution is specified in the manuscript. The pH buffer here is used as analyte. Here I'm going to show you the specific procedure of performing this experiment. So first I'm just demonstrating all the components. That's the interior of the spectrometer. Um, battery slot, slit, grating, iPhone cradle. First, I injected 10 millimeter of the methyl red solution into the sensing chamber. Just gonna jump in a little bit here. As you can see, it's filled to half of the reservoir. And I injected 10 millimeter of the pH buffer. I uh, shake it to make it uniform. You can see the red is becoming transparent yellow right now. And then I connected the battery um, to prepare to take the picture of, for the spectrum. Um, I inserted the iPhone uh, into the cradle and made sure it's very tight to the bottom of the cradle so that the position is the same every time. I took the picture to the raw white LED spectrum first because uh, this is for normalization. I auto locked the focus of the cell phone here. And then I inserted um, the actual sensor with the sample into the spectrometer. Yeah, it takes a specific orientation. All right, that's it. After we finish performing the experiment, we need to do image processing on top of that. Since the spectrometer already separates the color into different bands, we only need to quantify the intensity of each 
of these bands using image captured from a cell phone camera and then processed using MATLAB. First step, we used a pre-programmed algorithm to crop the cell phone captured image so that the spectrum is centered and enlarged. And then we select six bands equally spaced in the center of the spectrum to crop out the color pixels. Each band has a dimension of 20 by 20 pixels. To perform image processing, we averaged the RGB value of all 400 pixels in one band to find out the average intensity information, as you can see in the figure on the right, right here. So following are the results we obtained from cropping the spectrum from the raw image data. The eight samples on the A row are the spectrums of only methyl red solution. So they are like the background because we have to ensure the background spectra are consistent. Then pH samples from 5 to 12 are added to each of the sample. We picked these values because methyl red solution as a pH indicator stays red below pH of 44.4 and changes to yellow above pH of 6.2. We can see that the resulting spectrums are quite different for these eight samples. Three measurements were performed for each sample set to ensure the consistency and accuracy. Here we applied the second image processing step we extracted six bands of each pix of uh, six bands of pixels from each spectrum and then showed a color mat right here you can see the results are pretty consistent from methyl red spectrums for band 1 to band 6 the patterns are pretty consistent whereas there is quite a variation in the pH spectrums in the shorter wavelength area from band two to band four. After directly seeing the patterns and differences, we still need to quantify the data information according to the given algorithm. The, this slide shows you the quantified intensity information. The figures on the left is the light intensity from background measurements. You can see that the bars are really close in general and the error bar indicating standard deviation is also fairly small, so the consistency is confirmed. Figures on the right shows the spectrum light intensity after we added each pH value to methyl red. We can see a lot of variation in band 2, 3, 4, uh, just directly following the last color map as well, and whereas band 1, 5, 6 are fairly constant. Uh, it makes sense because the red wavelength area in the spectrum are always present, but the good blue, green, yellow wavelength area sees most changes from previous color maps as well. The arrow bar indicating the f indicates the 5% error from each measurement. If we look more closely, we see that the spectrum information sees more the most drastic change from pH. 6 to pH 9, especially for spectrum uh, for band 4, which is yellow light wavelength from 570 to 590 nanometer. It drops its value from pH 6 to pH 7 and increase again from pH 7 to pH 8. Whereas band 2 and 3 corresponding to blue and green light wavelengths from 450 nanometer to 570 nanometer are most indicative at pH 8 to pH 9. This means if we are measuring the pH of some unknown solution uh, and if it is between pH 6 and 9, we can mostly look at the information of band 2, 3, 4 and map those values to this graph and find out what their pH values using these linear relations. In conclusion, a flexible, low-cost smartphone-based optical sensor uh, with the spectrometer accessory has been developed for point-of-care sensing, and it surpasses the computation limitation of smartphone by utilizing the cloud sync for pictorial data and converting raw images to spectrums and then into values that reflect the actual sample information. 
all components of the sensor can be readily obtained from the lab and easily accessible outside the lab, which ensures that the system is inexpensive, compact, and easy to build. Of course, there are also substantial future works to be done. First of all, we can still enhance the resolution of the measurement. Uh, potentially, we can add in new pH indicators to be more accurate um, and more resolute in basic solution measurements. And we can also add pH indicators for more acidic solution measurements. Secondly, we can also reduce the production cost by replacing the 3D printed fluidic platform with cellulose, cellulose paper platform. We can also improve the feasibility by using a dynamic website to replace MATLAB for data, for data computation and data sharing. Lastly, I would like to thank, thank Nanolab for providing the space and help for my research and Tufts Summer Scholar Program, Dr. Annie Moore, for their funding. If you have any more questions, please tweet your questions to the following hashtag. Thank you so much.